Hi, today we're going to talk about graphing simple quadratic functions. So by the time we're done, you're going to be able to graph a quadratic function and find its vertex and its axis of symmetry. A quadratic function is, in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals y. a, b, and c are parameters that change depending on the function. But the key part that makes it quadratic is that the variable x highest power is squared. So the graphs of quadratic functions are not straight lines. They have the shape of a parabola. And a parabola that we're going to think about is either going to open upwards like that, or it's going to open downwards like that. There are parabolas that open in other directions, but in this course we're not going to deal with those. So we're going to start with the simplest, most basic quadratic function, y equals x squared. So we're going to just plug in some points, just like if, you, if in doubt when you're graphing, plug in points. So I've got a table here. I've taken all the numbers for x from negative 3 to 3, counting by 1s. And to get y, I just have to square them. So negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 2 squared is positive 4, because remember, a negative times a negative is positive. Negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. And I'm going to plot, plot these points. So I have 0, 0. 1, 1. 2, 4. 3, 9. I have negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, and negative 3, 9. And if I connect these points with a smooth line from left to right, this gives me the graph of y equals x squared. This is called the parent function. It's the simplest version of the function. When we look at a parabola that's opening up, the lowest point is called the vertex. If we're looking at one that opens down, the highest point would be the vertex. The vertical line that goes through the vertex is called the axis of symmetry. And that means it's a line through which they, the parabola reflects on itself. So if I go one to the right and one to the left, these two points are reflections of each other. 2 to the right, 2 to the left, 3 to the right, 3 to the left. Parabolas always have symmetry across that vertical line. So if you can find points on one side of where the vertex is, you can just reflect them across the axis of symmetry to get more points. Now, in the parent function, the axis of symmetry is the line x equals 0. That's a vertical line and the vertex is the point zero, zero, the origin. So to see what happens when you graph, do different things to this basic function, we're going to use a graphing calculator. So I'm going to take all of those functions here, y1 through 5, and I'm going to enter them into my graphing calculator. So y1 is the parent function, x squared. y2 is 2 times x squared. y3 is 1 third times x squared, which is the same as x squared divided by 3. y4 is negative 3 times x squared. And y5 is negative 1 half x squared, which is negative x squared over 2. And I'm going to graph these on the standard zoom of the calculator, which is axes going from negative 10 to 10 in both directions. So the first graph is the parent function. The second one, that one is the one that was multiplied by 2. The third one was multiplied by one-third. There it comes. The fourth one was multiplied by negative three. Notice that one's upside down. And the fifth one was multiplied by negative one-half. 
So each one of these functions was a result of taking the parent function, x squared, and multiplying it by a number. When we multiplied by positive numbers, the parabolas kept their vertex in the same place, but they opened upward. And we multiplied it by the two negative numbers, the vertex was still at 0, 0, but they opened downward. So multiplying by a negative flipped the graphs upside down. Now the numbers we multiplied by made a difference in the shape of the graph. This first blue one here was y equals x squared. When we multiplied it by 2, we got this red one. When we multiplied it by 1 third, we got this black one, which was wider. When we multiplied it by negative 3, it was narrower and upside down. When we multiplied it by negative 1 half, it was wider and upside down. So multiplying a function by a number, if the number is positive, it keeps the same direction, but it stretches it vertically. Stretching, if you're mul basically you're multiplying the y values but keeping the x values the same. So it takes the original graph and stretches it out this way. If you're multiplying it by a fraction that's less than 1, it's actually shrinking it vertically so it makes it look wider. So multiplying by a negative number flips the graph upside down. Multiplying by a number whose absolute value is greater than 1 stretches the graph vertically. And multiplying by a number that whose absolute value is less than 1 shrinks it vertically. So now we're going to look at instead of multiplying by something, what's going to happen if we add or subtract to it. So again, I'm going to use the graphing calculator. I'm going to go back to my function list. So y1 is still going to be x squared. y2 is going to be x squared plus 3. y3 is going to be x squared plus 7. Oops, got to get rid of the rest of it. y4 is going to be x squared minus 4. And y5 is going to be x squared minus 6. Not negative x squared. I've got to get rid of that. And again, I'm going to just leave this on the graph for um, standard zoom. So there's the original, y equals x squared. The next one was x squared plus 3. Well, did I miss one? I think I must have typed 9 instead of 3. And then that was y equals x squared minus 4 and y equals x squared minus 6. Let me go back and change that one to x squared, ah, <laughs> plus 3 squared, that's why. It's just supposed to be 3. So it's just going to graph again. So notice every single one of these parabolas, must have made a mistake in typing that, oh. Every single one of those parabolas had exactly the same shape. They weren't stretched or shrunk like the ones that we got when we multiplied. Adding something to a function, or subtracting it, 
just shifts the whole graph up if you're adding something or down if you're subtracting something. So when we added 3, it moved it up so the vertex was at 3. When we added 7, it moved it up so the vertex was at 7. When we subtracted 4, it moved it down. When we subtracted 7, it moved it down. Or sorry, 6 that was. So adding a number to a function shifts its graph upward. And subtracting a number from a function shifts its graph downward. It's important to be aware of these things because we're going to get to more complicated functions and knowing these things about what happens when you add or subtract or what happens when you multiply or divide is going to make a big difference in how easy those will be to graph. So if we're going to graph a function, and notice there's a lot of stuff missing. Well, there's the bx missing from this right here. So all we're doing is we're taking the x squared part and the constant part. Now remember, x squared gives us that standard parent parabola with its vertex at 0, 0 that opens upward and goes through 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, and so on. But multiplying by a is going to either stretch or shrink that parabola vertically. So for the same x values, your y values are going to be x squared multiplied by whatever a was. And then adding that c value is going to shift that whole parabola up if c is positive or down if c is negative. So if I look at an equation like this, y equals negative x squared plus 3. My normal parabola, you always want to take care of shifting first. So the change in the vertex is going to go up 3. So I go 1, 2, 3. And then the negative 1 half is going to flip my parabola upside down and it's going to multiply the y values by 1 half. So once I've figured out where the vertex is, I can ignore the plus 3 part of this problem. And then I'm going to think of x and I'm going to call it y prime, where I'm just thinking about this negative 1 half x squared. Now normally when I put in 0, I get 0, but I have to multiply by negative 1 half. Well, 0 times anything is still 0. When I put in 1 squared, that gives me 1 times negative 1 half gives me negative 1 half. When I put in 2, squared is 4, times negative 1 half would be negative 2. When I put in 3, squared would be 9, times negative 1 half is negative 9 halves, which reduces to negative 4 and a half. If I put in 4, 4 squared is 16, times negative 1 half would be negative 8. Now, notice I didn't plug in any negative numbers. Remember what I said about that axis of symmetry. If I get the left side and then the right side, I can just reflect, or the one. if I get one side, I can reflect to get the other side. But since I'm ignoring this plus 3, when I plot these points, I'm going to pretend that that vertex is 0, 0. So 0, 0 is my vertex. Right one up a half would be this point. But again, I'm counting for my vertex. Right two, sorry, not up a half, down a half. <laughs> right two, down two would be my next point. Right three, down four and a half. One, two, three. One, two, three, four and a half. Right four, down eight. One, two, three, four. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I could even go one more if I wanted to and have it still fit on this graph. If I plugged in 5, 5 squared would be 25 times negative 1 half would be 
negative 25 halves, which reduces to negative 12 and a half. So if I go right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I would go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and a half. My axis of symmetry is always the vertical line that goes to the vertex. So then each of these points that I drew, whatever, however far it is to the right of the axis of symmetry, I have another point the same distance to the left on the same horizontal line. So this was to the right one, I'm going to have a point to the left one. This point was to the right two, I'm going to have the same point over here reflected. This was to the right three, so this is going to be to the left three on the same horizontal line. To the right four, to the left four. To the right five, to the left five. And now I have lots of points to help me draw my parabola very clearly and neatly. So my vertex on this is 0, 3 because it just moved it up three units from zero, zero, so the y-coordinate change. The axis of symmetry is always x equals whatever the x-coordinate of the vertex is. The domain means what numbers can you, apply, or can you plug in for x. And for these parabolas that we're doing with quadratic functions, the domain is always all real numbers, and that funky r with a double bar means all real numbers. The range is the y values that we get out of it. So you think about vertical spread when you're doing y values. Think bottom to top. This keeps going down forever, which means it goes all the way down to negative infinity. And as you move up, it stops when you get to the y value 3. So you're thinking about y values. The range would be from negative infinity up to 3 and you put a square bracket on the 3 because it actually does get to the value 3. So it's included in the range. Looking at the second problem here, again, remember we want to look at this first. The thing that's added or subtracted tells us to shift up or down. So our vertex is going to go down 8 units, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So my vertex is going to be right there. Now I can ignore the minus 8, and I'm going to think of x, y prime, where I'm going to be counting from here instead of the origin. And y prime is going to be just the 2x squared. So again, I'm just going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, that may be too far, but we'll see. And then I'm going to plug these numbers into just the 2x squared to find out my y prime. So 0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. 4 squared is 16 times 2 would be 32. Well, I have a feeling that one's going to be too high to fit on our graph. But remember, we're counting from the vertex, not from the origin. So 0, 0, right 1, up 2, right 2, up 8, right 3, up 18. My axis of symmetry is the vertical line through the vertex. This point was 1 to the right, so I have another point 1 to the left. This point was 2 to the right, so I have another one 2 to the left. This point was 3 to the right, so I have another point 3 to the left. And then I can draw the parabola. Just try not to make them pointy because they aren't pointy. They are rounded on the bottoms. So the vertex of this parabola, now we are counting from the origin, is left and right 0, down 8. The axis of symmetry would be x equals whatever the x-coordinate of the vertex is, so 0. The domain, again, for all of these quadratic parabolas we're doing will always be all real numbers. The range on this one, notice it does not go down to negative infinity. It starts when y equals 8. So I use a square bracket next to the 8, because that's where it starts, and it goes up and continues to go up forever. 
so it goes up to positive infinity. You never put a square bracket on infinity because you can never actually get there. Now, this is kind of a strange question. How would the graph of the function x squared minus 3 be affected if the function were changed to x squared minus 2? Well, in order to do this, you think of both graphs in terms of the parent function y equals x squared. So x squared minus 3, what we learned a few minutes ago, is if you subtract something from the function, it moves it down 3. So x squared moved down 3. This one subtracted 2. So this one would be x squared moved down 2. So that's how both of them would affect the x squared graph. Now, what's the difference if you started with an x squared moved down 3 and moved it so that it would be where an x squared moved down 2 was? Well, its vertex for x squared starts here. If I move it down 3, that vertex would be here. If I mine, that moved it down 2, I'll put an open circle, that's where its vertex would be. So from moved down 3 to moved down 2, it had to move up 1. So it moved up 1 unit. And the last thing is, this is supposed to be a large umbrella, and it is the graph of y equals negative 0.25x squared. Notice it's limited from x is negative 3 to x is 3 in its domain because they cut it off. And they want to use the graph to find the domain and the range of the function in the context of the situation. Okay, well, domain is horizontal spread. And range is vertical spread. Sorry about the beeping. So when you're thinking domain, you think horizontally from left to right. Where does it stop? Where does it start? Where does it stop? Are there any breaks or gaps in between? When you're thinking about range, you're thinking about vertical spread from down to up. So moving horizontally, we're thinking about x's. And when we're thinking about range, we're thinking about y's. The first x value I hit is negative 3. And the graph's all in there until you get to positive 3. So the domain would be from negative 3 to 3 and it starts and stops at those so it includes those. The range is vertical spread from bottom to top. So I start at the bottom. The first time I hit the point on the graph is where this starts. And it kind of looks like negative 2, but maybe not quite exactly. So we'll figure that out in a minute. And the graph continues, and I remember I'm going vertically and I'm thinking about y values. My graph stops being graphed when I get to 0. So just to check, I'm going to take my function, which was y equals negative 0.25x squared, or negative 1 fourth x squared, and I'm going to plug in negative 3 and 0 and 3. When I plug in, I'll start with 0. Negative 0.25 times 0 is 0. When I plug in 3, 3 squared is 9 times negative 0.25 would be negative 9 fourths. And I'm going to get the same thing for negative 3 because when I square the negative number it still becomes positive. 
So my range actually doesn't start at negative 2. Negative 9 fourths is negative 2 and 1 fourth. And it goes up to 0. So in the context, the umbrella has a width of 6 units because it goes from negative 3 to 3. And the umbrella's depth, in other words, how deep the scoop of the umbrella is, is from negative 2 and a quarter to 0, so that would be 2 and 1 fourth units.